let's welcome the executive director of um, is Enough is Enough, Yemi Adamoleko. I hope I got that right. Good morning, Ma. Morning, sir. Um, we'd like to know who you are, what you do. Who am I and what I do? Good morning, everyone. And thank you again, Pastor Yemi and Pastor Bimbo, for having me. My name is Yemi. I'm a child of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm beloved of the Most High. Amen. I walk in favor. I walk in miracles. I have <laughs> angels before me, beside me, behind me. <laughs> so Yemi's like, that's not what I thought you would say. But yeah, I'm, I'm primarily a child of God. I'm a daughter of God that's very passionate about Nigeria. Nigeria has given me a lot. I grew up on the campus of the University of Ife. Any great Ife people in the house? Hey, nice. Okay, I didn't go to Ife. I just grew up there. My, par <laughs> my parents were academics, so my parents were, were lecturers in the university. And because I'd grown up there, I just wasn't sure I wanted to stay on campus. But yeah, I, Nigeria has given me a lot. I enjoyed growing up in Ife. And now what I do is I lead a nonprofit that works on governance issues. As Pastor Yemi rightly said, what we're able to do, how we function, the kind of schools we go to, hospitals we can go to, all of that is tied to the type of governance that we have. And if we don't pay attention, we have what we have now. Mm. Want to clap for her. Um, uh, election is coming up uh, next uh, year. We have PVC matters coming up. I, I feel people are not educated enough in terms of the voter, is it registration or education. Can you speak to that? Gladly. One of the things I think is very interesting to note, between 2015 and 2019, Lagos State added about 700,000 plus people to its voters register. Right now, we've added 400,000 plus. So even with all the noise and all the we want to register, those of us that were involved in NSAS that were upset and we want to get involved, we've added less, about 300,000 people less to the voters register between 2015 and 2019. Think about that for a minute. So if we're really about change and wanting to get involved, it's probably that the message, as Pastor Yemi said, is that people don't understand as much, or quite honestly, people have lost faith in the system. So for a lot of people, what is on our minds is how to leave Nigeria. I used to be very upset when people wanted to leave Nigeria and be like, how can you want to leave? How do we make it better? The people who are in America and Canada and wherever else we are jackpotting to, if they jackpot, their country will not be what it is. So we have to stay here and fix Nigeria. Now when people say they want to leave, I'll ask, how can I help you? And it's not because I'm not passionate about Nigeria. Nigeria is my calling for this season of my life, so I'm not going anywhere, and I'm clear about that. But I'm also clear that there are certain people, because of what God has deposited in you and what your calling is or what your purpose in life is, Nigeria cannot help you fulfill that destiny. It's not a bad thing. I mean, there are certain technical roles. You want to do robotics. You want to, you are interested in nuclear physics. We're just not able to support that vision or that calling of God upon your life. So I say, how can I help? But the truth of the matter is for those of us who are here, who either feel a calling to be here or who for whatever reason you can't japa, then you have a responsibility as a child of God to make it better. It's part of our mandate to take care of the sick. Yes, you can clap, it's true. We have a responsibility, especially as children of the Most High. Because at the end of the day, the scripture is there and we quote it a lot. What is the use of light when you hide it under a bushel? It is in deepest darkness that light shines the brightest, I mean. But the ones we like is usually when they say there's a casting down, we shall say there's a lifting up. Because that one, in a sense, almost absolves us absolves us of responsibility. But it's also a bit of how we've been conditioned because democracy is not, um, you, have to understand, you have to be taught and we're not taught. So democracy means we live in a system where you have to vote for your elected representatives and whoever you vote for are the people that make decisions that affect your life. Everything from the type of schools you go to, there are people who are probably my generation, Pastor Yemi's generation, they went to Ife. Pastor Yemi would not want to send his children to Ife because he wants what's better for them. And Ife right now, the truth of it, I mean, I grew up there so I can say it boldly, is not going to be best for your children because they, just, I mean, well, they're on strike for one, but anyway. Um, yeah, but, some of them are here, please. Eh? Some of them are, are here from Ife. I'm sorry. 
sorry, I, I do empathize. But that's an honestly, Pastor Yemi, I'm ready to speak to students. Wala, you people. There's a whole ministry. I don't, I'm sorry. If I could divide myself into two, I would work on tertiary education. Because students need to be organized to tear that thing apart. As in, literally, they scatter the whole thing. Asu is on their own long thing. But Asu can strike from today till tomorrow. They're doing consultant. I mean, if anybody's a member of Asu, no vexo. But they're doing consultancy on the side and all that. You are the one that a four-year degree becomes eight mm. years. So when it comes to ASU striking or university matters, the students have the most to lose. So you are the ones that we should be hearing, not ASU striking. I'm sorry, sir. That was not part of the question. So, but that anyway, for anybody yeah. who wants to see me after about ASU and strike and students, I am your person. Seriously, we will just scatter the things. Just <laughs> okay. a little. But anyway. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, um, I am I'm concerned about accountability. Yes. I mean, it's like I pastor a church here. I'm privileged to be the founder, and we have a system where at least I'm accountable, you know, to the board, uh, finances, the, 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 the checks and balances that keep things sane. I don't just put hands into the church money because I'm the founder. So I, I, I realize that it's a major problem in our nation and most African nations. People just collect and go, what, what, what are you guys doing? What can we do about that? Because that's a major problem. So let's parallel it to running a business. And I like the fact that you use church as an example. How many people here run their own business? How many people? Okay, fantastic. So you run a business and you hire staff. You've employed people to come to work. On Monday, maybe they roll up at 11, and then they leave at 4. On Tuesday, they don't come to work at all, and they don't bother to send you a message. On Wednesday, they show up at maybe 2, it's raining, and then they have to leave at four so they can make midweek service. On Thursday, they don't show up and you don't see anything. On Friday, they leave at one because they need to go to camp. At the end of the month, their money is complete. No queries, no questions asked. You do that in January, February, March, April. I'm sorry, does anybody think that their attitude towards work will change? Excellent. That's what we do to politicians. They're not accountable to us. We don't ask them any questions. And at the end of every month, their salary is paid, that we pay for. Now, and that's what I was saying about democracy. So when it comes to accountability, it, it's, it works both ways. The first day I called my senator, he said, who are you? My name is Yemi. You, you called? How did you get his number? His number is on a website called shineyoureye.org. Shineyoureye.org. Oh. And he lists all the numbers that we, well, my, my organization manages it. He lists all the numbers, email addresses, and offices of every governor, senator, House of Rep member, and state assembly member. Wow. Can so check it out. The email, I mean, the address again. It's shine, it, it was, it's from the slang, shine your eye, pay attention, see what's happening. So it's basically that, shineyoureye.org. Wow. And you can find who represents you there. So I called him. Who are you? My name is Yemi. Are you a journalist? No. Are you in APC? No. What do you want? Oh, I just wanted to find out how you voted on a bill. He started shouting. Who are you? How dare you? Da, 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 da. I said, oh, God, calm down. It's not that serious. And I took time to have a conversation about why how he votes is how I vote. Because I have elected you to represent me. So. And so I want to make sure that we're on the same page. So we had that conversation. And I guess maybe also he didn't know, which is why I said it has to be taught. Obviously, I'd never been asked. Oh. And after that, now when I call him, my sister, how are you? Oh, that's better. Now, it's not to say that it's that easy, but also realize that we've gone for so long where our elected officials have not been asked questions. So it's our job to ask questions. It's our job to pay attention to budgets. What is being allocated for education? What is being allocated for road? It's our responsibility. Now, it's obviously much more difficult doing it individually, which is why we encourage people to be part of groups, either residents' association, if you live in an estate, even on roads that are not quote-unquote estates, they're residents that get together. Find an organization, for example, if you're passionate about education. Find an organization that's working on education and donate your time. If you're a lawyer, deploy your skills to help people who have cases. So there are different areas where you can get involved, but there's a need for basic understanding that in a democracy, you vote your elected officers into office, and it's then your job to hold them accountable, because otherwise you'll be like hiring staff that you don't ask questions. 
Wow, amazing. I, I, I think the, the challenge you've had is uh, that way anymore. They focus on God, you know. God, give me the job, give me the house. So we don't even ask questions. And I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. But we are asking people to join political parties, okay? Whichever one you want to join. But I, I, I think people should, I mean, young people should participate in more uh, like pressure groups like yours. Can you speak to that? How can young people, you know, participate in such pressure groups or civil society groups? Many don't even know what to do next. They just think politics is APC and PDP or what's the other one? Labor. Oh, labor. Okay. But I, I feel we need more people that can put pressure on those parties to perform better. And the more, the merrier. Yeah. So two, two things. Thank you, Pastor Yemi. Participating in political parties, one, allows you to put yourself forward to serve. Because right now, in, by Nigerian's constitution, there are 18 political parties. If you are not a member of any one of them, you can't run for office, number one. Number two, for anyone who followed the APC or PDP primaries, everybody else had primaries, but because they were the largest parties, they were the ones that were televised and people followed. The process is that delegates get to choose who the candidates are. Some, the law allows what they call direct, um, what's it called? Direct primaries, which means every member of the party gets to vote. But no party in Nigeria has an electronic database of their registers that's accessible. So the membership shifts and changes, so that's easily manipulated. The next type is delegates, which we all saw. So people who are chosen, who are financially induced, and I say that quite boldly, um, then get to choose who it is that they want. And then the third option would have been consensus. So we sit together and we decide who do we want, who do we want, and it's one person. So that's that with political parties. And, I'm, and as Pastor Yemi said, I do encourage people to join. If you have a heart for politics, a heart for service, and understand that it is not perfect. Understand that there is a lot in it that will challenge your faith as a child of God. Mm. That will challenge your sense of what is right and what is wrong, seemingly. But if you feel that you have the, because it is a grace, that you have the grace for it and you have your temperament for it, one thing I will say, please find a mentor. Find a mentor within the political party that you feel that you have shared values so they can, they can lead you. Now, the other side of it is what we call the office of the citizen. The office of the citizen, we say, is the highest office in the land because everybody that's an elected or appointed officer works for us. If not for citizens that show up on election day to vote, none of them have jobs. So they apply for a job, quote and unquote, to serve us, and we go out on election day and vote. So the office of the citizen just simply says, being in the office that recognizes that you work for me, and then I have the right to ask you questions. Pressure groups, there are very many, and which is why I said an easy one is maybe to join one that aligns with a sector area that is of interest. Health, finances, budgets, there's an organization called Budget, for example, there are quite a number on health, quite a number on education, because that allows you to, instead of thinking of the many problems of Nigeria, it allows you to focus your energy and your time on into specific particular. areas, yeah. So how can we, like get started. Get started. Today, um, today EIE.ng is the website of the organization okay. that I lead, and we do got general governance. So our, our primary audience is elected officers, trying to make sure that they're accountable. Have office hours. Let your numbers be public. If we call you to a town meeting, show up so we can have a conversation about what you're doing in my senatorial district or my house um, uh, constituency. Budget com is another one. They focus on finances and public finances. And it's a very interesting question, Pastor Yemi. What I will commit to doing is creating a list. Because yes. as I'm talking now, I'll be sending you to different websites. Yes. What I'll commit to doing is creating a list yes. that you can then share and people can then figure out what Which is it that passion. aligns with their passion. Yes. Wow. Please put your hands together for her on that. Um, people are struggling to get their PVC. And then we are telling people to vote. So what can you say to that? Or what can we do? Unfortunately, the, the Sorry, process... do you have a relationship with INEC in any way? Yes, we do. We work very closely with INEC. Okay. Unfortunately, the process is difficult. And what I want people to remember is INEC cannot be... cannot be, uh, what's it called? 100% functional in a dysfunctional country. Hmm. So just, first of all, start with that. So don't expect perfection from INEC. The staff of INEC are the same staff you will meet in Lagos Civil Service or wherever you are in Nigeria that are challenged. 
It's the same set of issues. It's the same set of issues that INEC office will not have electricity. They will have to get a generator. They will have to buy fuel. And if there's fuel scarcity or the money for fuel hasn't arrived in their local government, their computer will not work. So I'm saying that not to excuse it, but just to say that when you approach it, understand that INEC is not an island. INEC is in Nigeria with the, all the Nigerian issues they have, number one. Number two, they have stopped, what they did this year that was innovative, they allowed us to start registering online and then just go to the office and do biometrics. They started that June last year, but as per lastminute.com, we didn't quite answer them. So they cut that off at the end of May. They were supposed to stop registering at the end of June, but they've extended it indefinitely because someone has taken them to court, so there's a court case. So only thing you need that take, should take you to INEX office is if you have never, as in never ever, registered before. If you have registered and you want to transfer, change your name, update your data, you've now gotten married, you've moved, you used to live in Ogun, now you're in Lagos, all of that you can do online from your house. You don't need to move. So please, and that's part of the challenge with INEC. A lot of people just go there and don't need to be there. So there's a crowd, and you'll find that maybe 25, 30% of that crowd could have stayed at home. We're gonna have a table at the back at the end of um, the session, not my session, at the end of today, that would help you do that and share those websites. Part of the accusations against INEX staff as well, again, INEX staff, some of them have, are compromised politically, is that depending on the area that you are in, let's say, for example, it's a very, people there are mostly Igbos, and they think Igbos tend to vote a certain way, they will tell you they can't find your PVC so that you can't vote. It happens. I'm not, anybody can come and carry me. It's a statement of fact. And it's a challenge because people didn't realize what was happening for a while. They just thought it was a problem. So they'll say, oh, we can't find it. Oh, we can't find it. In our space, we call it voter suppression. It's a tactic to ensure that people you don't think will vote for you don't come out to vote at all. Because they don't have a PVC now, so they can't vote. So you tell them you can't find your PVC. When that happens, please make noise. Don't take it as, well, they say they can't find make noise? Is it like just shouting on the street, hey! Social media is very good. INEC is very active on social media, tag them. Okay. My organization is very active on okay. social media. In 2019, we helped almost 2,000 people get their PVCs by just amplifying it. Wow. So please go on our website and just send us a message. Specific And specifics always better. Don't get to a local government and say, I know people are not here, where are they not? Because when we're reading those things on social media, it's easy to amplify when I know exactly what you're talking about. So I know people are not here, I'm in a Korodu local government and it's okay. 8 a.m. Wow. So it's easy to no get somebody to call somebody in Korodu rather than, wow. I'm in Lagos, so I is acting up again. Lagos is big. So I hope that, I hope that helps a bit. So, but please do make the effort. It's, part of it is de it's deliberate to prevent a certain demographic, and I would say our demographic, people who listen, who can understand information, who can make informed decisions. There's nobody here that I believe that 5,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira will change how you vote. But there are a whole group of people in Nigeria, and they're not small. A significant number of people who actually participate in the process can be swayed by selling their vote. So it's in a politician's interest to ensure you that you can't be bought, don't vote, and ensure people that I can induce with money can vote, because then I can induce them to vote for me. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I noticed that um, you, you encourage people to leave the country now, from what you have said, that those want to do nuclear, <laughs> nuclear physics. physics. We can't help you. Or, Robotics. Go, or gospel physics. Well, <clears throat> gospel preaching. As the Lord, as the Lord leads. <laughs> okay, but what's your realistic? Uh, I mean, what is your view of the of the state of the nation presently? And what, what do you think about the nation? And when do you think things are going to really change? Because people are just tired. We are tired. But you know, in this stage that I'm in, both in terms of nation and in terms of my faith. My, my petition to God always is that my faith must count for something. 
The fact that I say that I, Okoyemi, serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who knows the end from the beginning, hmm. the I am that I am, the Lord omnipotent, the Lord omniscient, what does all that mean? Hmm. It sounds good, and we're hailing God and we're praising God, but don't, what does it mean in our ability to influence change? What does it mean for that as light to, to push darkness back? And for all of us, that for me would be that challenge, that the country is rough, economy is rough, our politicians don't really care because again, they've gotten away for it for so long. So for Nigeria to change, we must, and I say that, there's really no other way because the Bible says that the heavens belong to our God, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. Yeah. So there is, we sing songs about where the feet and the hands of Jesus we're quick to do things of ministry that God has asked us to do, feed the, uh, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless. But do you realize that if the economy was better, the number of people we have to feed would be less? That's right. That's right. If free health care was easily accessible, we'll have to pray less and trust God less for those types of miracles. People that travel tell you that their prayer points change. You're not praying for lights. You're not praying that Asu will not go on strike. So the answer to that, Pastor Yemi, I believe it's ultimately our, we need to decide that we want Nigeria to change. For those of us who are here, for those who have left, they've left. But for those who are here, we need to decide. And we also need to realize that those who choose to serve us or who want to serve us owe us. We are not, they are the ones that should be, not, I don't want to use the word afraid, but they're the ones that should care what we think. Care if we're okay, not okay, what they're doing right or wrong, because they're in the position to make that happen. And so as we pray and trust God, let's challenge ourselves to also be attentive to what God is asking us to do. One of my prayer points is that I would have the courage to obey. So if God tells me today, as I am now, I don't think I can run for office because I don't have the temperament for it. And I know that. But if God tells me to run for office today, it will take courage, an incredible amount of God, are you sure? Get thee behind me, sit and type conversations for me to step forth and say I want to run for office. So one, the courage to do what God has asked us to do. Two, the realization that we have a personal responsibility to make Nigeria better, especially as children of light. And in that thing, if it doesn't frustrate you, it frustrates me. That how can I say I'm a child of light? And there's so much darkness. Like, how does this make any sense? How does this align with who I say my God is and what my God can do? And three, that our desires and petitions go beyond God bless me, God sorts me out. Because if the nation is better, and we get involved in making it better, we will, the things we are praying for will by default be sorted out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, semi, semi finally, um, can you say some, some things to us young people to encourage us, you know? Things are so, somehow, somehow, we thank God for his favor, you know? Uh, uh, the ASU strike, uh, answers. What, what can you say? I mean, in the midst of it, I, I, I believe people should thrive. Yeah. If our light shines better in darkness. Yeah. So can you just speak to young, us young people how we can maximize the situation? Number one, never forget that you're a child of God and know that that must count for something. Either be it a source of encouragement for you, either just being the fact that I'm different, I'm special. The owner of the, as even if that's all you tell yourself every morning, the owner of the universe knows me by name and cares about what I do. Number one. Number two, trauma is real. Don't deny if you are feeling sad, if you are feeling low, if you are feeling depressed. If, don't deny it. Trauma is, and we've gone through a lot, but don't stay there. If you, either by worship or prayer or speaking to friends, doesn't get you out of it, seek professional help. Don't shy away from it. Trauma is real. And there are a lot of young people who are dealing with a lot of trauma from NSAS to now and just the general state of affairs. Number three, you have power, incredible amounts of power, by simply the fact that young people between 18 and 35 are the largest voting demographic in Nigeria. It's just data. So you have incredible power to shift things. Number four, find information, get educated. In everything, even in our Christian journey, there's a process. 
And I'll use, and I'm going to be very deliberate because I'm, I won't be surprised if there are a number of obedient people in the house. The, the movement for people following Peter Obi has gotten a lot of pushback, a um, lot of things on Twitter about people saying young people shouldn't waste their time and all of that. I'll say this. There's a process to elections. We've talked about primaries. And we've talked about the context of voting in Nigeria. You cannot be in Lagos and think your votes will determine who Nigeria's president is. It doesn't used to work that way. It's a game of numbers. And the Constitution says that anybody who's president of Nigeria must win in 24 of 36 states. 24? Of 36 states, yes. Must get 25, yeah. Win in, in 25, yeah, in 24 of 36 states. So when I say that, that, that's why I'm trying to say process. So it's not to say that young people who want a change. So you're saying APC and PDP, they're old, you don't care, da 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 da, da. It's fine. But understand the numbers of elections, the numbers of how votes are counted, and then be ready to do the work. It's not just in talking, it's just in wishfully thinking it would happen, but understanding it and paying attention. And because people are trying to teach you that, don't make them an enemy. They're just trying mm. to get you to pay attention to the reality of just elections in Nigeria and how it works. So it's not to disdain a hope or a belief or a desire to want something new and something different. That desire is valid, that hope is valid. Because if we don't hope for something, how do we, how do we move, move towards it? But don't let that take away the need to understand the process and walk through the process. Thank you. Okay, wow. I think that's balanced. Uh, we want to take one, one question or two from the audience. Is anyone that want to ask a question? Protocol, let's, uh, let's get, uh, you want to ask a question just you know, and just be as brief as you can. Okay, there's someone there. Um, but <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Morning. So what's the question? <laughs> Are you sure the foundation is very wrong? It is. He's right. It's is very. It? You're, you're actually right, and I completely agree with you that the process of choosing our candidates is faulty. But unfortunately, until we get in parties and change how candidates are chosen, it yeah. is what it is. Oh, so having chosen, and I think the clarity of people having, exp we've been talking about this thing for a while, but this year's primaries got people to now finally understand the gravity of it when you don't, are not involved in the parties and the process of choosing candidates. So we have now chosen the candidates. The point now is, what do we do? We now don't say, well, this, the process yeah. is bad, we won't do anything. Yeah. No. It's then think through, how do we then choose of a bad process? How do we make it the best? And okay. which is okay. why I was talking about people whose votes can be bought or not bought. You can read, you can write. Pay attention to what they're saying. One of the things we talk about is say that, who has character? Who has a track record of having done anything? Paid salaries, run mm. anything? And this is not just about presidents, please, let's not forget. We're choosing governors. We're choosing 109 senators. We're choosing 360 House of Rep members. We're choosing 900 plus State of Assembly members. And those are people that make laws in the states at the state level. The president is important without a doubt. But your governor is even more important yeah. because there are a lot more that he controls. Yeah. Your senator, your House of Rep member, when we do local government elections, they're responsible for gutters. Local government chairmen are responsible for markets. Local government chairmen are responsible for road signs. Things, even some roads are local government roads. So having 
had a bad process, we now have candidates. It's now to say, okay, who is it that is running that aligns with what I want to see and that I will hold accountable at the end of the day? But I, I do agree with you. So hopefully people will start joining parties so we can begin to change the dynamics of that. Okay, please put your hands together. Let's have the final, uh, just one, one more question. Can we have you, sir? Just one more. Um, <laughs> Um, praise the Lord, Church. Uh, okay, I mean, well done. Great job you're doing. Excellent. Yeah. Um, very commendable. My question really is around, um, perhaps as um, social activists yes. um, who hold um, political public office holders accountable. What 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 is your take about being a card carrying member of a party? Now, so the experience has shown that certain activists oh. once. Uh, have become a card carrying members, they have been um, sort of perceived as being induced or being manipulated to be used. And again, we've seen a lot of credible, uh, you know, organizations like that. But after a while, they started tilting, you know, to one particular party, and then it became more like it, it's override the objectivity of what they set out to do. You know, so how do you balance this? Could you be a card carrying member, uh, you know, and for those who are interested? in maybe holding public office holders accountable, when they become card-carrying members, what will be the balance around okay. this? You might need to help Thank you. them understand the question. You might need to help them understand. So the question he was asking is that if I am, for example, a card-carrying member of ZLP, yeah. and I start trying to hold the governor accountable, the governor is in Lagos, is APC, it's easily framed as me because I'm in another party is why I'm attacking the governor. Is that, is that the question? It's tricky, and it's where we are in, in the nature of our politics. But what I would suggest for the person is to do it not alone, but do it in the midst of other people who maybe represent PDP or no party affiliations at all. So it just makes it easier for it to be objective. And then also when we are holding officials accountable always go to use data so it's not emotional or emotive you didn't do this you are corrupt okay based on what but you can say that you promised you will build 10 schools you have only built two when are the eight going to get built no one is going to say you are being emotive because the governor promised and you're holding him to his words okay. so that's what i would suggest to manage that but you're right it's just where we are in our politics that people tend to want to make it uh, adversarial in that way but thank you he's also talking about, i think he's also talking about the stigma if for instance i'm a card carry member of apc because the party is not doing well people just believe that i'm part of the system so people now try to run away from registering or be belonging to a particular, uh, particular party or the hideout. It's so. true, and it's hard. What I would say then is also, part of it is also in also changing the parties, is don't go it alone. So if you have a group of friends that all of you are uh, sort of forward thinking and okay. progressing yeah. in your thoughts, okay. that you go in together. And not only is that important because of the stigma, it's also important because of the change you want to make. You can't make that change alone. Because if it's like pouring a drop of red food coloring in, in, in an ocean, you can't see the red. But if it's, I don't know, let me be another bucket, you, will, you, are, you will at least see some color changing first before things happen. So it's going together in groups so that your impact is also a, a bit more. And you are not, you yourself, you are not discouraged by the reception that you get. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, uh, how can people get involved with EIA? Just some basics. Sure, thank you very much. We're online, eie.ng, that's the easiest way. And then we're on social media as EIE Nigeria on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow, send a, a DM. We're happy to help, happy to guide. It's a personal passion of mine beyond the organization, especially my organization is not Christian, but I am. And I'm clear that as children of the Most High, our faith must count for something. Amen. We can't be light and the society does not know that light is shining somewhere. It, just, it doesn't add up. So let's, let's, let's arise and shine. Amen. Uh, but sorry, but how do you get your funding? That just, you know. Ah, very important. Run, you know? Very, very is important. Is it from APC? Or PDP? Or PDP? Well, you see, no. 
Our funding, to be honest, is started off primarily from international donors. And that's how we've been able to do a lot of work that we've done. But in the last three years, one of my personal challenges to God is that for our work in Nigeria to be relevant and take root, Nigerians must believe in the work that I do. Mm. So part of my own, yeah, part of my own mission is to ensure that the majority of EIE's funding comes from Nigerians. Because it's also a reflection that we're putting our money where our mouth is. Mm. We can't complain about things that are bad, da 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 and not be willing to support organizations that are trying to make things better, making registration process easier, making it easier to hold people accountable. So that's also a challenge. I tell my friends, my friends don't call me to complain about Nigeria. I'm not at home for it. So you're either sending me money, you're giving me advice of what we can do, because I know some of them, if you work in certain organizations, you can't come out to a protest or you can't be seen to do certain but things. You but your bank account or your check can speak for you as well. So. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting balance, but, but we're getting yeah, there. And I'll publicly like to thank Pastor Yemi for his own personal encouragement of the work that we do. Thank, thank you. you very much. But if anyone wants to, anyone wants to give here, what, what can they do? It's on our website as well, eie.ng. There's a donate page, oh, there's a donate fine. button, so you can follow the prompts from there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Please go there today and donate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank Please put you. your hands together for uh, Yemi Adamaleko. Thank you so much, Ma, for... Uh, blessing us. Wow. Ah, God bless you, ma'am.